Talking Head time. We're gonna talk about an important subject, and that is how to know when it's time to upgrade your computer. Because obviously with all the next gen stuff literally coming out all around the same time, there's a lot of food for thought here. And I'm getting a lot of messages and emails from people saying, Jay, should I buy the next thing? Or should I buy the current thing and say screw the next thing? Or should I just say screw it all? Screwing it all is always an option. Cable Mod's new Stealth Sense technology effectively eliminates the need for sense wires for your 40 series GPU. Stealth Sense features a hidden bridge which signals the GPU that a full 600 watts is available, all without the need for fragile sense wires that can easily be dislodged, leading to a black screen and 100% fans. To see the full spec list and power supply supported, follow the link in the description below. All right, so put on your favorite music. I'm gonna hold true to my word and not put music in these Talking Head videos. Um, also, check us out on Discord where you can continue the discussion that we're gonna be talking about today at discord.gg slash jays 2 cents It's all free and stuff. And if you are members here on YouTube or subscri subscribers on Twitch, you get access to a uh, elite pages where uh, we get to talk more direct. So anyway, moving on, let's talk about today's subject matter, which is how do you know it's time to upgrade your computer? So most people follow kind of like a five-year cycle. Like, that's kind of like the norm. Enthusiasts probably go every two years or so, because that tends to be like every generation. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna say right now, you do not need to upgrade every single generation. That That's kind of, that is definitely diminished returns. Uh, and that's an enthusiast type of thing, to think anytime something new comes out, you have to have it. You don't have to have it, you want it. And there's nothing wrong with wanting the latest and greatest. There is something wrong with feeling like you need the latest and greatest unless the nominal improvements from generation to generation are actually causing you uh, better efficiency at your tasks. And this is usually people that are working in like enterprise or where every minute of render time counts for whatever your projects and stuff are. So then it might make sense. Most of you watching, probably I'd say like 99 out of 100 of you don't fall in that category. So let's just set that aside for a moment. How did we get to this spot right now? It is history time with Jay's two cents. So when the malware, the human malware virus launched in uh, 2020, it, it kind of caused something unprecedented. And that was where a lot of people sort of jumped on the same upgrade cycle at the same time. You know how they say if enough women hang out together long enough as a sink, that sort of, sort of happens? The same thing sort of happened. Stop face palming, Phil. It's a legitimate thing. God damn it, I have two daughters and a wife and I know what it's like. <laughs> Everyone has on like a different sort of upgrade schedule. You know, yeah. So uh, think of a bunch of, of sine waves, right? So frequencies. And there's a lot of people here, a lot of people overlapping, and it starts to look really weird with all these people in these different upgrade cycles. But what happens when about five, almost five years ago, everyone kind of got something new at the same time. Whether they were building gaming rigs or something to keep themselves entertained at home, or they were suddenly having to put together classrooms in their home because their kids were doing remote learning or remote work. So, so many people at the same time suddenly synced up on that signal. So right, for the last few years, like last two or three years, we've been in the downward sl slope of the scope. So the peak would be people buying new stuff. And then the low side, which is we've been at for the last few years, as people not buying because they didn't have any reason to. Everything was new enough for them. They didn't, they didn't need to go buy a new system. I think we're starting to back into that climb. Just views and interest and discussions taking place tell me people are looking at upgrading. And I think right now we are in a very synced up five year schedule right now. So one of the other things that has to usually happen to make gamers need to upgrade their system is a game that reminds them your system might be aging. I think the only game coming out right now and it's not even really a game that might force people to realize it's time to upgrade is if you're into flight sim. Because flight sim 2024, the ideal settings are pretty crazy in terms of like being the latest gen stuff necessary to even get to what's called ideal settings. But that's like a forward facing setting that means as upgrades and, and hardware produce better results and better performance in the future, then those settings become toggleable for people. They're not usually meant to be turned on on day one. It's kind of like a a future setting for when hardware can support it. So right now we haven't had many games, if any, that really force people to have to upgrade. So that's the first thing you need to ask yourself. I'm gonna talk to the gamer right now. The only reason you should ask yourself if you need to upgrade your system is if the games that you're playing don't allow you to toggle on the visual settings that you want at a acceptable frame rate. So here's the thing, even the worst gaming computers can play games. They just suck at it because you're at like a slideshow type of frame rate. I'm sure nobody out there is really okay with this, but if you're fine with a 15 frame per second slideshow, then you don't need to upgrade. 
But if you're if you have like a minimum standard of I want to run my game on high and I want a minimum of, a, of 100 FPS or 60 FPS or whatever it may be, and you dip below that, you don't need me to tell you it's probably time to upgrade your system. That means your system has become dated versus the ne the necessity of your requirements, not the game requirement, your requirement. We all have different requirements of what's okay. Nick, perfectly fine with 60 FPS and stuff. He doesn't even notice it half the time if it's not turned on, like high refresh rate on the monitors. Phil and I, 120 minimum. Like we need 120 FPS. We can see the difference. Go ahead and now argue down below about the fact that we can't see the difference. And so-and-so science paper said the human eye can only see yada, yada, yada. Go ahead and pause the video, I'll wait. And, and you know what? We're a little jealous of you that can say that you don't need anything above 60 FPS because you definitely get off cheap when it comes to hardware and stuff. So that's, for the gamer, it really comes down to whether or not your system is able to keep up with your standards and meet the requirements of any future facing games that you're interested in. I think we may not see a true renaissance in upgrades because of gaming until GTA 6 launches. I think that might be the, the title that sort of forces people to have to upgrade. Now let's talk about whether or not we're just, you're doing video editing and you're live streaming and doing Twitch and you're an aspiring content creator and you push render on your, on your Premiere or your DaVinci Resolve free edition or maybe Sony Vegas if it still exists. And you're like, render, estimated render time, three hours, 82 minutes or whatever. Three hours, 82 minutes, four hours, 22 minutes, <laughs> math. That's how time works. Hey, Nick told me once he was five foot 12, so. <laughs> If you're perfectly fine with a four hour render, then no, you don't have to upgrade your system. But if you're like, man, I can't do anything on my system for the next four hours and you want that render time to be lower, then it's time to upgrade your system. So that's a pretty, I know some people watching this right now are going, this is the most duh type of conversation that's ever taken place. It is taking place everywhere. And it's like, some, for some reason, people are looking for validation from someone else that it's time to upgrade your system. It's your decision, it is your money, it is your circumstance that you have to, to really analyze and say, this is time to upgrade. So if you need that render time cut in half, then that's up to you, that, that's for you to determine, okay, now I need a faster system. We're not gonna talk about enterprise and we're not gonna talk about home basic use because one, enterprise is such a different type of use case depending on the billion different ways you could be using your system. And I think most people in enterprise have someone else potentially making that decision for them, an IT department or something. So that's aside. General computing at home, surfing the internet and all that, pff, do it on a potato, you're fine. Let's talk about now what you should upgrade to because this is the other thing. This is, this is the other half of that coin. It's like, okay, we are on the cusp of new hardware. Everyone knows in October, we've got new CPUs coming. We've got new Intel CPUs coming. We've got Arrow Lake, we, that's all happening. Like everyone knows right now, 1010 is like the date. That has been leaked and talked about a million times. 1010 is when we're gonna be seeing what the details are regarding new desktop CPUs from Intel. New generation stuff, chiplet type design. I mean, all different. So kind of scary given everything that's just taken place with 13th and 14th gen. We know the X3D, uh, X3D CPUs from AMD are coming. That's specifically gamer centric. And we also know that at the rollover of the year is when we're gonna be seeing new GPUs coming out. Whether they be AMD mid-range to launch around the same time as Nvidia's uh, new 5000 series GPUs. We obviously know that 5000 series GPUs are coming. Latest leaks have given us a lot of information about potentially even like a 24 gigabyte 5080 model. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's coming up. So with all of that, now that people go, do I, should I get the newest thing or should I hope for a good deal on the outgoing family of processors and GPUs? Here's the difference this time around. When 40 series launched two years ago in 2022, yes, it's been that long, September of 2022, is when we saw all the new uh, stuff coming out for Nvidia with November launch. So we are like, Two years beyond that. It feels like yesterday, but here we are. 30 series had just finally come back down to MSRP. And the problem with that was MSRP costs on an outgoing family of product looked like a very terrible proposition in terms of perform like performance and cost. You're like, well, wait a minute, if I'm gonna spend you know, $1,500 on a 3090, why would I do that and not just pay 1200 on a 4080, which we knew was gonna be faster? 
So what people are hoping for this time around is because we are not in a scalping condition. We are not in a supply and demand constraint that we were seeing with 30 series. Uh, we have seen 40 series prices start trickling downward. We have seen them. 4090 aside, the, the Halo product is always going to maintain its highest price. I've still seen people trying to sell 3090s for $1,000. It's like, you're stupid. Right? Who dropped you on your head and how many times? I've seen 3090s though going for like 450 bucks now on like marketplaces. And it's like, as long as it's a trustworthy GPU that you think isn't been abused, that's a good deal. That's a really good deal. So you ask yourself, should I get the latest and greatest at a potentially premium cost? Because day one, it's always going to have a premium and there might be some quote unquote shortages when they first launch. Who knows how much Nvidia is stockpiling these to, to keep it available and on shelves or do I just get the outgoing product? Here's the thing, like we just talked about with the gaming discussion, there's no real title slated to come out around the time of launch that is gonna make the latest and greatest necessary. Short of maybe Microsoft Flight Sim 24, okay? There's no reason why if you can't find a killer sale or deal on a current generation product versus next gen that you shouldn't go for it, realistically. If you can start finding like 40, 80 supers for like 800 bucks, because remember those are, those are 999 GPUs or thousand dollars. So you start finding these for like mid sevens, high sevens, eights, because you know what's gonna happen those folks I started off this video with saying, I have to have the latest and greatest no matter what, they're gonna be like, I need to recoup as much cost as possible to pay for my next thing. So they're gonna run out and they're gonna wait in line and they're gonna buy the 5000 series and they're gonna be like jumping up and down because they're fanboys and whatever, that's fine. I'm not judging you, but they're gonna go, I wanna get some money back. So they're gonna sell their current stuff, which is probably a 4090 or 4080 or whatever to get back as much money as they can. So you're gonna find that good deal. There is nothing wrong with buying used either. We've talked about used, we've showed how to buy used, we've talked about ways to keep yourself protected and safe from getting scammed and all that. That is a viable option. Don't even, you don't even have to buy new current gen. Find someone offloading their current gen and then test it. Have them show you videos of it running and, and under load and what the temps and all that stuff are. If they're serious about selling it, they need to be willing to show the, the, the proof that it is not a bad product or it's defective or they're trying to scam you or whatever. And only deal with in-person purchases in my opinion. Don't deal with shipping because it's too many times people are willing to just take your money and say screw you and not ship the product and sell it three or four times and then keep it. It's, it's rampant and nothing can be done about it. So in-person type of purchases in a public safe place is the only way I'm comfortable with dealing with like used marketplace. But that is a viable option. And if you're running, say, a 20 series processor, or excuse me, a 20 series GPU, that came out in 2018, don't forget how long ago that was, then anything now, 40 series especially, is going to be a huge upgrade for you. So CPU wise, the problem with that discussion now is that means if you are running, let's say, an old like, 9, 000, like a 9th gen Intel or something like that, or a 10th gen, and you're like, okay, I don't want to jump on Arrow Lake because I, I have an issue with whether or not they're going to have problems, which Intel is very adamant, we're not going to have problems, but huh. that means you have to accept 13th or 14th gen maybe. That's scary for a pretty much a, a reason that doesn't need to be explained. You know why that's scary. The amount of 13th and 14th gen processors on marketplace right now, you have no way of knowing if that's a degraded CPU. So I personally would not trust a used 13th or 14th i5 or i7. i5s are probably, are, are fine actually. i7 and i9 are the ones you should really actually be worrying about. Now they all had the potential for the problem, but i7s and i9s, because they had much higher power limits and voltages, are the ones that I would sh definitely shy away from. I would only buy new in that instance, that way you at least have a warranty. The problem is apparently Intel for a while there ran out of warranty replacements, because so many of them were being RMA, they literally did not have enough CPUs to send out for replacements. So that's the scary proposition there. Stay away from used. I, just for 13th and 14th gen, stay away from used. That's the best thing to do. But if you're running an old like 6th gen, 7th gen, 9th gen, whatever, don't, don't discount like a 12900K. That's how I beat Austin. It was easy. And the, the bundle deal was insane at $279 for a 12900K and a motherboard and RAM at Micro Center. You can't argue with that deal at all. So there's options out there that don't require the latest and greatest newest gen. But again, 
it really boils down to the simple question of, does my computer do what I want it to do now as fast as I want it to do it? Because every computer out there can do what you're asking it to do. It just may not do it well. And that's, that's the conundrum you're in. It's like, do I need it to do it faster? If the answer is yes, and you've already answered your own question, you don't need this video, you don't need to tell you, you might be now just asking yourself, well, what should I get? And that's, to me, the fun of PC is there's so many options and so many realistic viable options. Like for the longest time there, it's like if you want any sort of performance, Intel was your only option. If you wanted value, then you went AMD FX processor, but you knew you were you knew what you were getting. It wasn't gonna be great, but it was gonna be a fraction of the cost of Intel. Now they're both expensive and they have their inexpensive options. And AMD has something prior to the new X3D CPUs, prior to the new X3D CPUs coming out, something like 18 different CPU SKUs. No, I'm sorry, I take that back. That's in, uh, Intel, 40. They have over 40 different AMD SKUs, including, including Threadripper. That's where some of the confusion comes in. The problem is they have X and non X for like every CPU but they're viable, they're, they're fast, they're reliable, so you have options on both sides. So that's where you need to start watching tons of video content about benchmarks and, and actual true use case scenarios to determine which CPU platform is gonna be right for you. And if you're coming from an old one, you're going to like a whole new platform anyway with DDR5, so you gotta start researching which is right for you. So to recap, latest and greatest is, is not necessary for anyone other than the enthusiast, enthusiast, the enthusiast needing to jump from gen to gen. Latest and greatest is fine if you're coming from something super old, because then even if you went mid-range latest, that is gonna be like a huge performance jump from anything old. And by old, I mean, let's say 10 years, because there's plenty of folks out there right now watching this still running like 6,700Ks or whatnot. They're getting the job done, but they're tired, right? They're, they're leaking a little oil, you know, they're leaving stains in the driveway. Anyway, I hope this has given you some food for thought. Feel free to have a full discussion down below. Keep it civil as best as you can, or just head on over to, over to our Discord, our, my community there. We're just over 6,000 of you now. The, the conversations are great. They're cordial, they're, they're intelligent, and everyone is, for the most part, being pretty civil with each other and welcoming to give actual advice and stuff with help without sitting there being like, that was stupid, why'd you do that decision? Or you, you're terrible. Like, I go to these forums in these Facebook groups just because I'm spying on people to see what the discussions look like. It is hot garbage. Trolls and idiots everywhere, that's all it is. So that's why I recommend maybe coming over to the Discord even to just have a real civil discussion. And there's channels in there specifically for these types of discussions. So we hope you guys will come and join us, discord.gg at jc2cents. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Sound off down below what your upgrade cycle is. Is it five years, 10 years, two years? And how much money do you tend to set aside for those types of upgrades? All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.